oh god, I'm falling off my ball. My big ball didn't go under. Hi, welcome back to the speaker corner. And uh, still playing. If you, I'm pretty sure the previous video was of the monoblocks, and then the, or I did this one first. I don't know, probably monoblocks first. But this is the SMSL DA9, and if you note, there are three witches on screen. And of course, there's three units totaling exactly one thousand dollars for this, and they're all on APOS. And so this, as you could have guessed, is the speaker amplifier version. Here is the SH9, the headphone out, which is balanced, quarter inch, covered in fingerprints, balanced in, very simple unit. Uh, I think this is two sixty, two two eighty, and then this is two fifty. Infineon chipped 50 watts per channel. Um, it has some unique features in the ways of amplifiers, so we'll get to that in a second. And the third and final witch is down there. The SU-9, which um, stays in the speaker corner specifically for this reason. Specifically to feed anything that could use a balanced input. Because, you know, I've got everything else, powering speakers, but if I need to test something on this desk, it has balanced input. There they are. And so... I'm actually powering or feeding this with the correct DAC. Not that there is a correct DAC. Please don't think that there is. A good DAC and a good amp work. There's very rarely a time when a, a if you have a shitty DAC, like a real shit DAC, like, I don't know, and then you have a good amp, it's like, oh, that's not good. But if two things are good, they're fine. Um, so yeah, one of the, uh, this is all dirty because I've been kicking the shit out of this DA9. In fact, I left it outside a couple days because I was powering outdoor speakers with it and using Bluetooth and it was great. Um, this has some of the most connectivity for an analog amplifier at least because it does have Bluetooth, Bluetooth 5, which considering there's no digital inputs on this at all, that's a nice handy feature. Everything should have that. We have a subwoofer out, which is powering that uh, Martin Logan Dynamo 300, which you could probably hear when I do. Now, you could definitely, now, that's the song where you could hear it. That's the Redline OST, uh, Redline Day main vocal mix. Yes, there is, okay, that subwoofer makes the go. In fact, I'm gonna unplug that subwoofer because it's it's making the RB42s, which is what I have hooked up, look a little bit too good, if you know what I mean. Let's just double check. That's more like it. Um, 50 watts per channel into eight ohms, Infineon driver, 50 watts. Uh, I think it goes down to two ohms, it'll drive at like 90, 150 watts at two ohms. Not that anybody in this video right now watching has two ohm speakers. And I don't recommend you hook this up to a subwoofer because it doesn't have enough power for a subwoofer but it will drop, drop down to two ohms and be fine. So if you got the ensemble, the DAC is the most expensive bit, and I, it's, it's MQA, so you know how much I fucking love and absolutely adore MQA, and it should absolutely be in everything, because I want to spend more to have that ability. Um, but if you had the stack, if you have the SH9 stack and the SU9 stack, and you get the DA9 stack, you get quite a little amplifier. So uh, same fascia as everything else. And if I had all three, if I could rip, rip that one out of there and then put this one on top and power them all up, you'd have a beautiful little stack. And they'd all have three individual volume controls. Everything match, everything great. In fact, yeah, you're just a straight up amp, but that has Bluetooth as well. So you'd have two items that could receive Bluetooth and then you get the one remote control. This is the SMSR remote, and you have A, B, and C. So this is another occasion where you hit, this is A. A is for the amplifier. And then I think C controls the DAC, which means B would control this amplifier, which is the headphone amplifier. And I've been using this thing mostly as just my, kick, my shit kicker unit. And by that, I mean it has, oh God, Excuse this nightmare. Little sound right stand to hold it up. It uses a standard IEC plug, i.e. the like normal power plug, which makes me very happy because that means I just get to carry around one plug. I don't have to carry around a brick. The transformer bricks have gotten old. I don't like them. I don't like carrying around a brick and then plugging in the little wire to plug in the big wire. It's like just stupid. Just so go straight into wall power 110. Here's your five-way binding posts. 
Here's your Bluetooth. Here's your subwoofer out, which I have unplugged. Then you have right and left XLRs. I'm using Amazon Basics XLRs because I don't have anything from World's Best that's this long. Plus look at those strain relief springs. How could you not love those? And I'm even plugging in the uh, RCAs from the Sonkaz just so we could do a DAC comparison. And if not a DAC comparison, then just to make it so that every hole in the back of this was filled. In fact, let's put the subwoofer back in because that's another feature. <sighs> It's the only chair you could stand up and it rolls away and you fall on your ass. I just like being down at this height because you can get real close. So turn you back on. I'm gonna see you got turned off when I leaned it on the desk. Uh, remote control. If you don't know how to fucking SMSR most work by now, hi, this is your first C reviews. Power, mute, um, input, and then function to do Bluetooth pairing. And then you have A, B, and C, and you have to press the correct one before you do anything on the remote to set it to the right mode. So if you press C, or B, nothing works. And you're like, why does my remote work? That's because you gotta press A. And then up and down is volume. And it goes all the way up to, I think, 70. Yeah, same thing as the SMSL VMVD. I don't know why 70. And left and right changes nothing. And the center button changes into the menu settings. So we have, can you see this? I hope you can see this. Input, EQ, bass, treble, soft clipping, brightness, version, and that's it. So input is obviously you have three choices, balanced, unbalanced, and Bluetooth. Let's put it to unbalanced because I haven't played that yet. You have EQ, which is nice. It's another, so what does this amplifier do special, Zeos? Well, all right, 50 watts per channel, eight ohms. Not, not the most powerful amplifier on the planet, but the Infineon drivers, which are pretty much fucking the best things you can get as far as like uh, class D amplification goes. Um, balanced input, not many amplifiers, not many speaker amplifiers feature that, that are in this form factor, you know, big, you know, rack mount stuff does, but nothing like this. Bluetooth 5, very good range, by the way. Um, and then a subwoofer out, those are like the three things. Like I want a subwoofer out for my speaker amp, Zeos. I want Bluetooth for my speaker amp, Zeos. I want balanced input, which really no one's asked, but you can have it, which you now have in the speaker amp. So we have our inputs, we've got our EQ. Oh, EQ is another thing. So the EQ has direct, tone, SBD, bass, super bass, rock, soft, clear. And I pretty much leave it in direct. SBD is a... um a weird format that FMSL introduced a couple years back that's like supposed to adjust automatically to, to like your the load on the amplifier. I have no idea how it works. I tend to leave it alone. I did have the tone controls on when I was testing the outdoor Empyrean speakers. Empyrean, Empyrean, um, because I wanted to base the boost. My brain did that. So you would just go into it you could either go to EQ and pick one of those. So you could do bass, super bass, or go to tone. And then you could access the bass and treble, which bass can go up plus eight. I'm sorry, plus 10 and minus 10. So let's put that back to zero. And then treble can do the same. These will not affect anything if you have the EQ turned off or set to direct, which is what I like to do. Because as Zeos, I have to make sure everything is, you know, not EQ'd mostly. That'd be kind of funny if it's a level one to use EQ for everything. A soft clipping. Um, I didn't do 100% of research into that because I just like, oh, soft clipping. What? Clipping bad. Uh, I should probably just describe clipping and I can tell you what I think soft clipping does. Clipping is bad. Clipping is when you push more power out, like the draw from the speaker is so much that the amplifier is getting to its limit. And I think what soft clipping will do on this setting because you can, since you can turn it on and off, like if it was a feature to just prevent it badness from happening, why would you have it on and off? What it will do is it will figure out if it thinks it's going to clip and then automatically prevent the volume from getting up that high, which can twist the sound a little bit like a protection circuit. It's like, oh, you want to go higher? You want to go higher? Like if you run this in a college dorm, you want soft clipping on because drunk asshole is going to turn the knob. Um, if you're an audiophile, like myself, you can go to soft clipping and turn that off, which makes you sort of responsible for if it's gonna clip, you're, you did bad. So let's take it out of this, take it out, you hold it down for a second. Uh, I'm gonna lower the volume, I'm gonna hit play on my TV's remote. Subwoofer's kicking in nicely. Actually, that subwoofer's up a little bit too high for this, but 
Now I have unlocked its ability to go. I think Vanitu had the same thing. If you remember my Vanitu T1 Encore review, you could actually access and un unlock that weird setting that like, all right, shut off soft clipping, shut off, there was like three things you had to shut off that were like safety settings. So soft clipping is like a safety setting. So honestly, I left it on. I had no problems with it. I, I couldn't, I literally couldn't blow anything up. If anything distorted, it was the speakers outside um, because I was just pushing them too much. So it, it was pushing the speakers to distortion at 50 watts per channel instead of the other way around. Uh, we're now in unbalanced, by the way, so we are hearing the SGD-1. <sighs> God, I love Infineon drivers. So, usually I recommend things in a stack. Like, okay, you can get this amplifier right here, but you get it with the, with the DAC and you get the stack. Or you can get um, this in the DAC and get a stack. We can get all three for $1,000 and you have a stack. But there's no reason you can't buy this just on its own for $250. The only thing that really slows me down from giving this like the hoo-ha re recommendation is the Lox GA30s back in stock. If you don't remember what the Lox GA30 was, go watch my review of the Lox GA30 because that was like one of the first reviews I did in this space. And that thing is dumb because it's also Infineon drivers. I think it also has a subwoofer out, but it also has digital inputs and Bluetooth and a remote. And so the benefits of this, you have the soft clipping mode, you have I probably more robust tone controls. I don't remember if that has any tone controls at all. And this has balanced. So you're really, you gotta pick, pick your poison. Because that got raised in price like 50 bucks when it sold out immediately, because everyone fucking wanted it. And so this has more features, is part of a very, very nice stack. So do you want the beautiful blue DA9? Or do you want the orange and gray Lox GA30? Because those are the only two choices you have now. I mean, I say that as I look at the Sabaj uh, A20A over there, which also has balanced in and is getting reviewed next. Congratulations, everything's fucking great. Um, but like, I haven't assessed that yet. This has been, this has been used and abused throughout my house. Just, just every, everywhere. Outside speakers, oh, in the den, my friends came over and like, hey, you have an amplifier, we won't hook up these speakers in here. And I'm like, here. By the way, this has got a lot of stuff coming out of the back of it. If you wanna know what, what that looks like, that's, that's all the things. So, I mean, I have nothing terrible to say. And I just, I'm, I had to do this review sort of separately. I usually have been combining reviews lately. Um, I'll probably bring this back for the review of the Sabaj stack just because I want to have something to compare it against. But this is the first, com this is the second completed stack that I've done in a while. So there's, a there's the little Sabaj stack, the A, 10, A, D, and H. And now we have the SH9, DA9, and SU9 stack, which again, the other one's down there. I'm not getting it, because it's all plugged in and wired, so yeah. How's it sound, Zeos? You didn't even talk about the sound, you idiot. Well, I have to stand up for the sound. So, uh, what speakers did I play this on? This pushed Micahs, Vintage Klipsch, the Outdoor Imperions. I had them on these JBL 580s for a bit, and then I put them back to the, the RB42s. I Did I put them on my ohms for a little bit? I don't think I took the Lox G off my ohms. That's where the Lox G A30 is, by the way. If you want to know what kind of competition this thing is in league with, the Lox G A30 runs my fucking ohms in my bedroom with the $1,000 Aperion Super Tweeters on it. So we're at that level now with for cheap. Two fifty is more money. Is is like a pretty good huff hefty sum of money, and it's going to do that sort of shit. So yeah. Oh, by the way, Vintage Morantz are going in this space. What else do I have to say about this? Really, it's it's an amplifier. It's a good amplifier. I throw on Bluetooth, but my phone is dying, so I can't do that. And the fact that it does balanced, just if you need a balanced amplifier, this is it. This is your fucking choice. There are no other choices. There are no other choices. Well, except for this. I might as well grab it and at least show you since it's going to be in the review anyway. Yeah, there's a slight size difference. I'm on, pulling that out. There's a slight size difference between the A20A and that. And the A20A doesn't have Bluetooth or anything. It does have a subwoofer out. And it has balanced inputs, but that's it. I think this has a little bit more power or the same power. 
honestly. This thing also has a built-in 15 uh, volt DC output for running the DAC, which that's a very, very specific stack thing over there. So we're gonna leave that alone until I can either get the headphone amp also, because then I'll have a three versus three, you know, all out, go for it stack. Uh, where are we going? I'll pull that sub again. Yes! In your arms tonight. Oh, I'm skipping forward. You know, I just did, I just, like an hour earlier, did a review of these Marantz monoblocks from Japan from the 90s. And on these speakers, because I wasn't going to swap 97 things around, and I don't know if I could tell you which one sounds better. I bought those because I want that vintage Japanese, you know, someone spilled beer in that one smell. And I think they have more potential. They have more wattage. They're four times more powerful. This is 50 watt per channel. That's 200. But these new amps don't care. I wish I didn't have to do the outro because I would just end it on died in your arms tonight. Boop. All right. So linked in the description are all three components of the SMSL SUDA SH stack. The nine stack. The stack of nines. Because that's a nine, that's a nine, and that's a nine. They're not tens. They're nines. So links to APOS and all those. Uh, links to some other shit I talked about. I don't remember. Definitely links to the RB42s. I got to get those back sold out on Amazon. They've been in stock for too long. Zeos needs to really push that everyone fucking needs a set. Lightning. Because they're fucking great. Like, they're great. And I haven't, I haven't hooked them up enough, and I haven't used them enough, and I need, really need to figure out a place to use them in a semi-permanent location because they're just fantastic. How do you do that with a four-inch, Micah? Micah needs to make a six-inch version of these, and then we just throw the boot cards in the trash. All right. Links to these in the description. Thank you for the wallpaper. Wallpaper, which is in the description. Why witches? Because they do bewitching things. That's why that's there. I have a, so many other DACs I could have put there, but I'm like, you know what? That's a good enough DAC. Boom. Um, the amplifier I kind of take out and put back for you know testing purposes. Again, the convenience of just having power plug input amp go. Love it. Um, wallpaper, uh, Patreon and subscribe star. See these reviews early. Yell at me early. Yell at me early. Also get access to the wallpapers early. Um, Patreon subscribers should see reviews early, uh, up to two weeks now. Now that I've gone every other day, like I'm just dumping reviews at like a whatever pace I feel like. Some things might be in there for a month now. It's gonna be fantastic when I have just reviews built up and I could just go on vacation and then come back and I didn't miss a single day. Um, but just participate in the, in the yard sale. Meow. Participate in the tuber sale. I'm putting you in the yard sale, baby. There's a minimum bid on you of $50 million. But I have to visit every day. Yeah, so uh, $5 a month, see reviews early, participate in the yard sale. I don't know if anything in this stack is going to end up in the yard sale. Because maybe the SH9, I think I was waiting for this amp before I like decided. Because I like this amp, just for ease, ease of just pull out and testing. But, but I, like the DAC, maybe? I don't know. We'll see. The yard, the yard sale shows up once a month, first to the 10th. Name your own price. Bidding starts at zero for like 99% of items. Um, I will ship internationally. You just have to pay half the shipping. So it's free shipping. Pulled out some hair. That's nasty. Free shipping continent United States. Half shipping international. Um, if you want to ask me questions, please. I, I Sorry to put it behind a paywall, but the $10 a month chat is accessible for $10 a month on Patreon or Subscribestar. Put you in the behind the scenes Telegram chat, which is my phone is yelp. Cat hair. My phone is yelling at me right now. People are messaging me in that. You can ask me questions day and night. I'll get back. I wake up. There's six questions. I go at 
I tell you what the answer is with my voice or a video bubble or pictures or whatever you need to know to get those answers from me directly, I give them to you. Plus, there's other people in there who are way smarter than me as far as audio goes. People, I don't claim to be like the best audiophile. I'm the best. I have all the right answers, but I just get all the stuff and I can convince you, the newcomer, maybe you need to buy this and start listening to audio correctly. This thing is so fucking cute. Um... Yeah, so $10 a month gets you in the behind-the-scenes private Telegram chat, $5 to see reviews early, and participate in yard sales. And if you want to just hang out in a cool forums, the Hi-Fi Guides forum and the Hi-Fi Guides page, which is not updated yet, and I'm so fucking sorry, unless this happens like two weeks in the future and I've already updated it, or DMS and I have updated it. Uh, that exists. And yeah, now I'm done. And now I have to hit the power button with my, my left hand. Mr. Black is in my right hand, and she's super cute. Baby, you're super cute. She's old. I could tell she's old because she never would have let me do this three, four years ago. Nope. All right. Thank you. Wallpaper. Good. I'm good. You're good. Thank you. See you in two days. Ah.